Hey everybody. I am jumping on the Facebook page, my Facebook page, and I'm going to give you a little mini webinar basically. So today's topic is how did I gain two pounds overnight? Nine reasons why the scale went up. So who am I? If you don't know me already, my name is Nicole Simonin and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. So over the past 14 years, I've helped women lose 20, 40, even 90 plus pounds without crazy diets, without insane workouts. I work completely online now with my one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, I help pe women all across the United States lose weight for the last time. And I love working with my clients because this is where I get to make it more doable, more easy and more effective for you for the rest of your life. Um, just a little bit more, I am an ACE personal trainer, health coach. I am getting ready to do my first of two TED Talks this year. That's coming out in October, so keep an eye out for that. Um, I also have a podcast, Shape It Up Over 40, and I am the author of the No Fuss, No Mess, Shape It Up cookbook. I've been featured in Rachel Ray, In Season, Bicycling Magazine, Real Simple, and MSN. So. If you want to learn more about me, head to shapeitupfitness.com and let's dive into the topic today. So again, we're talking about nine reasons why that scale went up overnight. Now, if you grew up in the 80s or the 90s, you probably were taught that the scale knows all, right? It scales everything and there couldn't possibly be another reason why the scale has gone up other than that you gained fat. So times have changed and we now know that the scale doesn't always tell you the full story. It doesn't take into account how much your bone mass is. It doesn't take into account how much muscle mass you have. It doesn't take into account how much water you have drank, drank, drunk, not sure what, <laughs> all you grammar police people out there can correct me on that. Um, but it doesn't take into account to the actual physical capacity of what we're holding inside our body. It really is just the gravitational pull on our body on this earth, okay? So we're gonna dive into nine reasons why the scale went up overnight. Plus, I have some bonus tips at the end, so make sure you stay. So we have all gotten on the scale, me included, in the morning. Fingers crossed, hoping that the scale is going to give us the number that we want. And that's probably a whole nother topic in itself of the mindset shift that you need when you step on that scale in the morning. Um, like if you step on that scale and it's totally destroying your day, you and I need to have a chat. <laughs> um, so sometimes we get on that scale though and that number's up and if you don't understand kind of what's going on in a physical capacity and everything else and everything that I'm going to tell you in the next couple of minutes it can be very frustrating because you know especially if you feel like you're doing all the right things and it's just not showing so diving into reason number one the scale went up you could have had a really salty meal so I love Chinese food, I love sushi, um, Japanese food, Mexican food. They're very, very salty. Um, I am definitely more of a sweet person. Like if I had to pick between salty and sweet, I would definitely go sweet. But there are times when I like chips and you know just salt. So if you're eating a salty foods, lots of salty foods, sodium, can take two or three days to get out of your system. And it puffs you up, right? We all know like if you try and take your rings off and they don't quite come off, you might've had some, like I had some little salt yesterday, so I know my rings are snug today. Not too bad, but. Um, reason number two the scale might've gone up is that you had too much sugar. Ironically enough, sugar is kind of similar to salt in that it kind of puffs you up. Sugar can also take a couple of days to eliminate and pass through your system. The third reason the scale might have gone up is you are dehydrated. So you have to make sure you're drinking enough water. Our body is mostly made up of water. And if you don't know this already, I forget the exact number, but it's like you can survive without food for seven days, but you cannot survive very long without water, which I'm going to take a sip in a second because my mouth is getting dry, but <laughs> make sure you drink enough water. Ideally, you want to be drinking 90 to 128 ounces per day. So also if you're consuming caffeine, which I'm having my 
little afternoon. Is it afternoon? It's afternoon. I have my little afternoon cup of joe. Um, you want to, um, if you're having caffeine, salt, or sugar, you want to offset that with a little bit more water. So if you're drinking a 16 ounce cup of coffee, caffeinated coffee, you want to be drinking 16 ounces of water. Um, most women drink 30 to 40 ounces of water a day. Recommendation is 90 to 128. So there's a huge difference between what the average woman is drinking versus what your body kind of needs. Um, there is something called hypertremia that you can actually drink too much water. It's water intoxication. Um, it's generally related to an underlying condition like the inability to filtrate water out fast enough um, in your body, but it's extremely rare. So I have a tip, a good rule of thumb, and just a heads up, it is a little TMI, <laughs> but if you're going to the bathroom and your urine is pale yellow, almost clear, then you're properly hydrated. If you're waking up in the morning and it, your urine is very dark yellow, you are definitely dehydrated. So make sure you get those water in throughout the day. I like to spread it out through the day. Like don't try and drink a gallon of water in one shot and expect it to kind of hold you over through the whole day because you're just going to pass it through really quickly. All right. Number four reason why the scale went up is, again, it's another TMI. Sorry, there's a couple TMIs in here. <laughs> but um, number four is you haven't done a number two. So your weight on the scale could be up just because you haven't gone to the bathroom. You haven't had a bowel movement. And you also want to make sure that you're eating enough fiber throughout the day so everything flows nicely in and out, <laughs> to put it politely. Um, ideally, you should be getting 25 to 50 grams per day. Again, all these statistics, you kind of have to take in, consider in consideration like what your body is like, because everybody knows their body a little bit different. Um, so you just want to make sure you're getting in a fiber where you are going to the bathroom regularly. All right, number five. Again, another TMI, sorry. Fellas, if you're watching, <laughs> you might want to hold your ears on this one. Um, number five is, ladies, it's that time of the month. If you are still at the point where you are having your menstrual cycle and you're having your period, or if you're going through perimenopause, sometimes you can gain like five to six pounds just having your period. And um, I know me personally, there are times, not every time, but there are times that I'm very bloated and I look like I'm three months pregnant. Um, and it's all water weight. It's just your body trying to go through that process. And during menopause, right, our hormones are all over the place. It could be 20 days, it could be 30 days, it could be 10 days. You know, your period could be very erratic. So can your weight. So be kind and patient to yourself during that time of month. I do recommend hydrate a lot. Um, that will help flush it out. All right, number six reason the scale went up you could be intolerant to something you ate. Dairy is a very huge culprit of this. Um, even like um, wheat and you know gluten products sometimes can be a culprit. I know dairy is in everything. Uh, it does contain a lactose, which is a milk sugar that most people can't digest. I know me personally, I, um, I grew up on milk. Like I drank milk like it was going out of style when I was little. Like on super, super hot days in the middle of summer, I would come in and ask for a glass of cold, like actually put ice cubes in my milk. So I used to drink a lot of milk. And when I turned 40 officially, I was told I was lactose intolerant. So I guess I have used up my milk for my life. Um, but just be aware of certain different foods. And I would like to recommend there's a, um, I don't have the link in front of me, but it's called Food Maps. F-O-D-M-A-P-S. You can check that out. And basically, um, there's a whole list of foods that you could be kind of intolerant to that you may not be aware of. Like, I know there's some people that are allergic to carrots. Um, some people have an intolerance to tomatoes. So little things that could be lurking around. Just be aware of when you're eating. If you notice that you're bloating up or, or having gas or things like that, you could be intolerant to it. So intolerance definitely is one of those things. 
like I mentioned to um, wheat and gluten, you know, gluten free is very um, popular right now. I am grateful for that too because I think I am also intolerant to gluten. Um, I definitely feel better when I don't eat a lot of bread and stuff like that. So again, this comes back to learning what your body, um, how your body reacts to different things and kind of learning you as a person um, and how you metabolize things, what feels good, what doesn't feel good, that kind of thing. So these are one of the things I do work on with my one-on-one -on -one clients. So if you're interested in learning more, you can go to shapeitupfitness.com slash chat, C-H-A-T, and you can schedule a call with me and we'll jump on the phone and we can chit chat. All right, so on to reason number seven. I'm gonna take a sip of water. Am I talking too fast? I'm a fast talker. Okay. Number seven, uh, you possibly could have done a very intense workout or went for a really hard run, or even if you're not used to running and you're now starting up, the body goes through like an inflammation response when you start to work out. And it's because you're breaking down the muscles and stressing your nervous system, which can result in a, some swelling and weight gain. And the irony of working out is like the whole point of lifting weights is to break down the muscle fibers so every time you kind of tear the muscle as it rebuilds which is why it's important to rest as that muscle rebuilds it rebuilds bigger and stronger so that's how you increase the strength of your muscles um, but it is an inflammation response to the body and the body thinks something is wrong basically it thinks you're injured so it's going to send some inflammation responses to that area of where you work so if you've ever felt like that pump that you get like bicep curls that kind of thing it's your body just thinking you're actually hurt <laughs> so uh so there will be some swelling and and weight gain with that um if you've ever done a really hard leg workout and for those of you who are not into lifting heavy weights you know i'm not saying you have to lift heavy weights but if you i do think you should lift weights but not necessarily really heavy, but if you've done a leg workout where your legs felt really wobbly the next day or later on that day, and you maybe tried to put on a pair of jeans or some snug dress pants and they don't fit, that's the swelling that you're getting after the workout. And they will depuff in a day or two. All right, number eight reason the scale went up overnight is same lines, you have gained muscle. So lean muscle weighs more than fat. Muscle takes up less space than body fat and muscle is good, right? So if you are doing a fat loss program and gaining strength, and I am not talking about like mega bodybuilder because that's actually really hard to do, um, but gaining strength by lifting weights or doing some sort of resistance training, which I highly recommend that you do, the scale number might go up, but your inches will go down. Um, sometimes when you're first starting off into a fat loss program, you actually might gain more weight before those inches change and so you're basically you're not really losing the body fat yet and you the scale will go up i had a client who did very well she really only lost i think maybe 10 pounds and um her strength just went up tremendously but the inches that she lost it was it was it was beautiful absolutely beautiful because she was very strong and she was lean but she only lost 10 pounds so don't always rely on the scale to be your one and only measure for whether you're on the right path or not all right number nine remember I'm doing some bonus tips at the end so make sure you watch the whole thing all right so number nine I the carb cutting diets that are out there the keto diets that everyone is so ready to jump on <laughs> if you're doing one of those it's one thing if you decide to choose that diet for a specific reason so meaning keto has shown people kids that have um, epilepsy they do really well on keto diets so I'm not just counting keto or any other low carb type of diet I'm just saying if you have gone that route and you're doing it to lose weight when you add 
carbs back in, you are going to blow up like a puffer fish. And so if you decide to go keto, you're going to have to go keto for the rest of your life unless you want to gain that weight back. So if you have dived into the latest and so-called greatest diets that are out there, which I really hope you haven't, I hope you are ready to ditch the diets and learn how to eat healthy food. I'm sorry, these gnats <laughs> all over the place. Um, but if you are, I hope you're ready to ditch the diets because you know, if you grew up in the 70s and 80s, diets were like the thing and they really have not served us at all. I think they've made us all a little crazy. Um, so if you are doing keto or something along that lines and you add those carbs back in, you, you will gain some weight, okay? Because what happens is the molecular structure of a carbohydrate actually carries two water molecules with it. Sorry, not to geek you out on science, but when you eat that, it will actually pull in more water. So that's why you blow up or you get heavier um, when you eat uh, carbs when you've cut them out. All right. Okay. I'm going to take another drink of water. So hold on one second. All right. So bonus tips. Burning 3,500 calories a day equals one pound of fat. So unless you overate 3,500 calories in one day on top of your daily caloric intake, you couldn't possibly have gained two pounds overnight. Oops, that's just my reminder to finish up. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind. You you would have to be eating a lot of food in order to gain two pounds overnight of actual like body fat. Uh, another bonus tip is your weight loss journey is not 12 weeks long. Your weight loss journey is from today until the day you die, right? Because you can lose the weight then you have to maintain it and you have to understand not just how to lose the weight, but you have to understand what works for you in order to maintain that weight loss for the rest of your life. Um, this is one of the things I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients. We work on not just fitness, uh, resistance trainings, you get customized workouts. We work on nutrition. I do not give diet plans. I do not give you a, this is specifically what you have to eat. I give you something like guidelines and then you get to decide what you want to eat and fit it into your lifestyle and then I guide you on what we can do to tweak those nutritional meals and get you to the results that you want. But the other part is the mindset part of why you are like moving more and eating less but nothing's happening. Like why are you not doing the things that you need to do in order to get to the results that you want? So getting you from where you are today until your weight loss journey, and then I give you the blueprint for how to keep that weight off for the rest of your life. I absolutely love what I do with my clients. Um, coaching them has been one of, it's just so much fun for me. I love watching people change, not just physically, but through their mindset. It's, it's really, it's, I really enjoy my job. <laughs> so, all right, bonus tip number three is instead of the scale, use pictures, use a tight fitting shirt or a pair of jeans. Jeans are actually really good for this um, to judge your progress because that scale, like I said earlier, you know, it doesn't take an account to whatever's going on metabolically in your body. So definitely tight jeans are probably a great way to do that. So like if you have a pair of jeans that just aren't quite pulling up all the way, you know, try them on one day, put them in the back of the closet, try them on another month, pull them up, see what happens, um, and use that as your guide. Pictures are a great way as long as you're taking them in the same angle. Um, you know, depending on which angle you take a picture, you could look heavier or leaner or taller and all that stuff. So, but those are also good ways to judge your progress. Um, without using the scale. Also, the next one is the um, using a tape measure. That is usually how I 
determine whether my clients are being success successful or not is where your growth measurements are. So getting a tape measure and taking your measurements is always good. Just be consistent um, with where the tape measure is. All right, so stop letting the scale be your ultimate score taker. And keep in mind that when you're looking at your weight loss journey, yes, we call it a weight loss journey, but there's things to consider too, like how, what inch of sizes do you want to be? What body fat do you want to be? What is your health and wellness? How do you want to function in your daily activities? How strong do you want to be? How fast do you want to be? How flexible do you want to be? And most important, how do you want to think throughout your weight loss journey? How do you want to feel throughout your journey? How do you want to feel about your body? How do you want to feel about the foods that you eat? So it's not just that plastic metal thing that we step on every morning to see what our gravitational pull is, right? The scale, it really has more to do with that. So, um, so setting your goals really hasn't, can have nothing to do with your weight. You could decide to do a 5K, now granted, if you're still kind of quarantining, <laughs> maybe you do a 5K around your neighborhood, things like that. You could do push-ups as a, um, something to set a goal for, increasing your strength, everyday activities. Uh, I know I had one client who I worked with her one year and she would go to the shore every year. And I worked with her, I guess it was in the fall. And the following year we had worked together, she went back down to the shore and she was came back and she was like, I'm so excited I could lift the windows so easily and clean them this year because she was cleaning out her shore home. Um, so it's little things like that that is the benefit of working out and being healthy and being at a healthy weight. Uh, so fitness isn't, oh, so sorry. Fitness isn't just about looking good, although it is a pleasant byproduct, um, but it is, it can be about your daily activities, you know, doing things more with ease. Um, I find it's more about being a 90 year old woman and not needing someone to wipe the drool off your face or help you to the bathroom. Cause you know, as we age, independence is really priceless. Um, so in closing, do not to give away your power to your scale. Um, I am going to see if you guys have questions, if you're watching this on the replay, um, or if you're watching live right now, I know we have a couple people live. I can't see if you have a comment, you can feel free to, um, put it in the comment section. Again, I am not, I haven't been on a Facebook Live in a while, so they changed some things around on me and they didn't, they didn't notify me, you know, like they should notify me. But um, if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section and I'll go back through and I will answer all those questions that you have. If you want to, um, if you're, if you found this video helpful to you and you want to kind of learn more about how we can work together in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you can jump on the phone with me. Um, at shapeitupfitness.com slash chat, C-H-A-T. If you are not ready to take that step today, you can join me in my monthly challenges over on Facebook. I will drop the link in the comment section after this live is over. This month, it starts on Monday, we are doing the plank challenge. Uh, it's a little bit different than probably other challenges that you may have tried if you've tried other ones. So I want to invite you over there. You can check it out. And like I said, I will leave you the link down below. If you want to search it, it's shape it up over 40 challenges. All right. That is all for me today. I am probably going to jump on tomorrow. Um, so if you're interested in finding or watching that live video tomorrow, just let me know in the chat box and I will let you know. Um, and I can't think of the topic off the top of my head, but Oh, I know what it is. It's on cellulite. <laughs> so, all right. That's all for me today. I hope this video was very helpful to you and I will talk to you soon. Bye.